my name is Carolina. I'm going to 12th grade. My favorite subject is French. Ooh, why French? Because I like to learn new language. And what class are you taking right now in summer school? Bio, bio A. Biology A? Mm -hmm. And what types of things are you learning this summer in Biology A? Like the DNA, um, macromolecules, um, the nucleus. What types of activities do you do in your summer school classes? Like related to the lessons we're learning that day. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do a lot of group work? Do you get to play fun games? Or do you just sit and take notes all day? We get to play fun games and group work. And what has been your favorite either activity or lesson that you've done this summer? When we went outside and we were playing frisbee. Frizzy? Yeah. What did you guys learn about Frisbee? How did that relate to biology? Like the light and dark reaction. Oh, yeah? Photosynthesis. Did you learn about plants and how the sun works? Yeah. What are your goals for this summer? To pass a class with at least an 85% and, and graduate. Awesome. And why is that important? Because I want to be someone in life. Do you know what college you want to go to yet? No, I'm not sure. Not yet. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? A social worker. Oh, really? Why do you want to be a social worker? Because I want to help kids. Which of your teachers do you feel has, like, really kind of been super engaging this summer? All of them. All of them? Yeah? Can you give me an example? Because they're all, like, they all teach in a fun way. Like, it's not boring at all. My name is Jose Gonzalez. I'm a soon-to-be senior, and my favorite subject in school is history. And why history? Why is history oh, favorite because subject? I like how, how we can study everything that happened in the past and how the past affects the future. So I'm really into that. What class are you taking this summer? Um, this summer I'm taking Bio A. Bio A? Mm -hmm. And what are you learning in Bio A this summer? I'm learning about how DNA works, how we use photosynthesis to create food, and how a lot about um, biology in like simplest form. What has been one of your favorite topics or lessons that you've learned this summer? Um, about DNA, how mm -hmm. DNA provides genetic information for all living things, and how we, without DNA, we wouldn't be here as awesome. a human. And how have your teachers made the class fun and exciting, or have they? Um, by creating fun um, activities, by taking us outside and playing games with us, by interacting with the class. Awesome. What games did you play outside? Uh, we played a game about photosynthesis, how the sun, how if we use sun's energy to start the chloroplast and how the chloroplast affects photosynthesis. Awesome. And what did you learn um, today in the lesson? Um, today we learned about um, our mRNA, how it's trans how DNA starts off in the nucleus and how then it's transcribed into mRNA. Or do you know what college you want to go to? Uh, I want to go to UC Riverside. What do you want to study at UC Riverside? I want to study political science. Why is that? Because I'm into government and I like how our governmental system works. My name is Millie. Um, I'm going to the 12th grade and my favorite subject would be math. My name is Christina. I'm going to the 12th grade and my favorite subject would be science. Um, my name is Michelle. I'm going into the 12th grade and my favorite subject is math. And what classes are you guys taking this summer? Are you all in the same class? Biology. Uh, I'm taking history and English. I'm taking English. What is your favorite activity or topic that you've learned this summer so far? Um, activities would be like getting up and like interacting with other like the, my other peers. And um, my favorite subject okay. would be on like cells that I've learned in class. Yeah. For me, I think. We're like just writing in general because we always have to write before we leave the class. And that would, like my favorite activity would be like how we're playing Jeopardy and stuff like that, like different activities to get us to learn it and like still communicate with everybody. Okay, um, so I think my favorite activity would actually be like standing up and walking around like with other students, like communicating with them and having like. What types of rules does your teacher have in place? Do you guys have to line up outside? Do you have to shake everyone's hand before you come in? What types of rules does your teacher have in the classroom? Um, well, for my teachers, um, before walking in, we have to put our homework in a table. We have to sit down, um, be respectful to others, and just get straight to work. Um, for me, it's um, just.
whenever we have homework or something, they usually collect it at the end of the class, like at AIT or whatever, however you say. They usually collect it during that, at that time, and yeah, and then we just have to walk in and go straight to doing our work. Yeah, like when we walk into the classroom, they usually have it now against the wall, so we just have to get in and we go straight to work, and then like rules, we have to like respect our other peers. Um, what are your goals for this summer? Do you guys have goals for this summer in your classes? Um, well, my goal is like to pass um, to pass my class because I am going on to my senior year. And I have to like get all of the stuff that I didn't pass out of the way to go on to my senior year. Um, for me, it's actually, I am passing my classes right now. So it's just making sure that everything's in order and I could go into my senior year wearing the senior shirt. Um, for me, it's just to make up all my credits because I'm missing a lot. <laughs> Besides Ms. Medina here, who has your who has been your favorite teacher this summer? I have two. It would be Miss Harper and Miss Capaldi. And why are those your favorite? Um, because like their acti like their classes are fun. Like they actually get my attention. Yeah. Mine would be Miss Furlong because. I don't know, she's always walking around, she's always like trying to keep us entertained, but at the same time learning. And she knows when how to joke around with us, when to joke around with us. And then she'll always take it back to, oh, okay, so this relates to that because... Mm. And if, um, my favorite teacher would probably be Mr. Gonzalez. Because he's always like, like for the same reason, he's always um, very into like teaching us and stuff. So, yeah. so do you guys know where you want to go to college yet? Yeah. Cal State Long Beach. Cal State Long Beach. I want to go to UC Riverside. Do you know what you want to major in? Um, well, I want to be a nurse or a doctor. I want to be a forensic scientist, so I'm going to say criminal justice or science. I actually want to be a teacher. Uh, my name is Hannah Kazem. I am a 2010 core member. I teach uh, full inclusion special education at Alliance Jack H. Sorbonne Middle School three years going into my fourth year, and now I am a faculty advisor for Institute at uh, Alliance Ochi High School. One of the things that I see core members struggling with is uh, what we call checking for understanding. So they kind of, they forget to plan into their lessons little uh, um, instances where they can check to see if students are following or not. And so they, they get all the way to the end of the lesson and then they find out, did they get it, did they not get it, instead of being able to change course in the middle. Um, I also think that uh, in lesson planning and in institute, um, there's a lot of different things that we're asking them to do all at the same time. So one of the biggest struggles is just trying to sort of manage all of those things at once. We'll see like a lesson plan that has a great opening or like a great exit slip or a great um, guided practice and the core members are just, it just takes practice to be able to get all of them at once. And then obviously management. I do see core members struggling with remembering to give warnings, how do they give warnings, um, remembering to set expectations and then follow through on those expectations. So, but again, I do, I, it's really cool to watch them practice and, and get better at it as the student goes on. One of the coolest things I think for students is that um, for example, in one of the classrooms that I have, there it's a biology remedial class over the summer, and the students have four teachers that were all biology and neurobiology majors in college, which is just unheard of. We, you know, we, we go into schools and there's people who are PE majors teaching biology, and the kids are just not getting the same level of expertise. Um, and then those four teachers really get to collaborate and sort of check each other and if something didn't register for a kid with one teacher they get it again with the next teacher in a different way um, so I've really seen students able to check their own level of mastery and clarify things that didn't didn't click for them during the school year. I'm Tony Emerson uh, I was a 2007 New York City Corps member and I'm school director at Luskin Academy which is a high school um, in South LA. What is the role of a school director? A school director is charged with uh, supporting uh, his or her staff um, to develop core members in a way that matches that school director and that staff's vision. Um, visions are contingent upon the overall institute vision in addition to the visions that each team sets for itself. And what is your vision for Luskin? So I began thinking about that uh, earlier in the spring by trying to create some vision for an end goal, <clears throat> an end goal for core members. Like this is 
what we should be aspiring to achieve with our core members in terms of teacher skill, mindset, etc., knowledge. And I realized that that's actually very short-sighted because our students are our ultimate constituent. And so how I began thinking about our vision is, well, what sort of students do we want to develop? And in my opinion, we're developing students into the next generation of social justice leaders. Um, people who have the academic skill to be amazing professionals in addition to the confidence, the personal confidence, the pride in community, um, and the critical consciousness it takes to examine what holds um, some communities back from achieving everything they can. And so our vision has sort of tailored, has been centered on uh, four categories. Uh, a, solidarity, which is community plus a shared vision for the direction in which you want to head. Um, rigor, so expectation placed upon core members, upon students, upon everybody to achieve amazing goals. Um, critical hope, which is idea uh, around in spite of, not even in spite of, but really partially because of uh, the challenges and barriers that we face. We have hope and we're optimistic and we believe that in spite of those things that hold us back, we can achieve um, amazing things. And then Luskin Pride, which is a pride and love for the space and the students and the community that exists here at Luskin. My role here at Institute is um, a school operations manager. So essentially what I do is a lot of the operations and logistics of our school site. Um, and also just um, in general making sure that core members feel really comfortable, welcome, and that we're creating um, the type of culture that we really want to have at this school. What would you say makes Luskin unique? Um, I think that we are unique in that we have um, just like an amazing staff team that's very close to one another that have been able to create, like I said, like the, that kind of culture that we really wanted um, in many ways. Um, I think we have a culture that is very focused on like community and um, as Tony would love to say, like hashtag solidarity um, and have not just had like one community event like many other schools, um, but have actually just integrated that into everything that we've done. So um, on a weekly basis, there's events or opportunities rather for core members to engage with parents, community members, students, um, which I think is great. So it's not just like a one-time thing, but it's something that we really are encouraging core members to do on an ongoing um, and really weekly basis. How do you interact with the core members? Um, usually core members come to me when they have questions, um, so I do get a lot of questions that I field. Um, and um, the, the TFA office, um, if you kind of look around, this is really like a space for core members to come when they want to talk to somebody, when they want a snack. Um, you can see I have like a little snack snack pile over here um, when they need to use supplies. I like put supplies in a corner. Um, so I, I feel like a lot of their like lower level needs, um, like basic needs, um, are being met in this office um, and hopefully by me. Why have you enjoyed working at Institute? Um, so I've really enjoyed working at Institute because it's been my first time at Institute. Um, I joined the recruitment team right out of college and so I never actually had that experience. Um, and for me, it's just been amazing to see like what, what type of preparation, what type of care and um, thoughtfulness goes into ensuring that our core members are just like as prepared as they could possibly be for the fall. Um, so it's been really great to see that from the staff side of things and to also in some ways experience Institute like kind of like our core members experience it for the first time. Um, so both of those things have been really great. this triangle, Justin? On the longest side. Why is it on the longest side? Because the bottom is, it goes like, like a bigger number. Looks like um, Mally's almost done. <laughs> and then it's hard at work. And right, you're done? Okay, good. Love it. Okay, in a couple seconds, we are going to label our... We want to label one more thing in our diagrams. Everyone done?
And that would be the answer. That would be the simplest. So this last step, that's a really good point, Gregory. This last step, remember to simplify. Sometimes, after adding the, the terms of the numerator, you might have the simplest answer you can have. But sometimes, you'll be able to simplify more. In this case, we were. Give me a five if you're really confident, and a fist if you're not confident at all, or somewhere in the middle. I need to see a hand from everyone. Bye. 